The Puma DV8 Nitro 3. Is this the perfect successor in our Puma lineup to the DV8 Nitro 2? Let's talk about it. Before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed watching content, thanks so much. Love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Strava for all sorts of other updates and things like that. So without further ado, let's begin. Specs of the shoe up here on the top. And for full disclaimer, uh, Puma never sent these to me, as in they didn't send it as a sponsorship. I'm just kind of talking about it at my own whim. So prepare to roast these shoes or whatever kind of context it's going to go into. Um, yeah. Basically, I do have the Puma DV8 Nitro 2s, which I've run past, well past 400 miles on, and I have decided to retire from my shoe lineup. So, the only next logical move in terms of daily trainers was to get the successor, which came out a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago or so, at the time of filming this video. So, yeah, without further ado, I guess we're just going to get into general specs and just talk about some of the things I've kind of seen here. So, the shoe does weigh quite heavy it is about 9.7 ounces putting it at like 260 276 grams on average which runs a little bit heavy as a daily trainer but there's other things to consider here which kind of reduce the weight or make it negligent for certain purpose we have two different foam stacks on this shoe we do have this tpu foam running the top piece which is like this non peanut packing peanut looking foam which i guess is used more as like your speed foam it's a little bit softer but it has a little bit more sink and then a little bit more rebound later whereas on the bottom here we have this nitro foam uh running the heel and basically the entire duration of the shoe up to the tip to basically reinforce this foam but also protect your foot when it comes to the elements of striking concrete and being a more resilient type of foam in this case right and in between both foams, we do have a carbon plate or a power plate, whatever you want to call it. It is visible from underneath the shoe, and that's sort of been the principle of the DV8 Nitro series within Puma's product, which I'm a fan of. And again, with the shoe being a little bit heavier and having that carbon plate, it doesn't reduce the weight, but it feels a little bit more springy of a shoe in that kind of case. And then at the bottom, again, nothing unusual. We just have a, we do have a different rubber pattern across the shoe, as you can see. And then I guess while we're looking at the outsoles, uh, this has been about 10 miles of running at this time. So uh, right off the rip, nothing too crazy to note. I have been using this both on treadmill and outdoor environment. And yeah, I mean, the only main culprits here are still like the outside areas of my feet. So over here in this area, um, there's like, uh, I guess like a rubberish pattern on this shoe, but then up here it starts smoothening out a little bit. I lose a little bit of that tread just as a result of just using the shoe and just my running form and all that. And then trying to be more conscious of like a more midfoot strike in this shoe, I do end up kind of burning the area here uh, as well in the foam, but not too much. We'll see as I go along how much damage that produces. So other things to note here as to why this area is going to be of massive, I guess, interest for me to observe for the next couple of hundred, 200, 300 plus miles, is that the shoe's stack height is different than its predecessors. Um, it does have a higher stack of foam, of course, going across the shoe. I think it's 39 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot, with a 10 millimeter offset. So that's basically giving you more of that high heel effect. And you can almost see it too, the way it's like kind of rocked more to be this kind of style versus like where it's flat. You'll have this like toe box area kind of sticking out this way. So the purpose there, I may have this backwards. And if I have it backwards, let me know in the comment section, is that by having it at 10 millimeters of an offset, it's trying to resemble more of that high heel kind of effect. And if you stand on your toes and walk around, the thing you're gonna notice is that you have more load on the calves than you would like the hamstrings, glutes, um, the quad areas and as a result this having a daily trainer with a 10 millimeter offset puts more strain and more use for the calves whereas on race day your shoe will be a little bit more neutral and is able to recruit more of the muscles like the hamstring glutes quads so in a way this is definitely a shoe that's more training for like leg muscles but also it uh, kind of helps conserve the strength of those muscles as you move forward into like a race day or your cross training and you need those muscles for a bike or something like that and again if i have that backwards in any sort of way and like the 10 millimeters more recruiting more muscles let me know in the comments below but i'm pretty sure 
based on like personal experience, I've got that kind of sorted. So again, 10 millimeters, it's not a massive jump from eight millimeters, which was in the Puma DB8 Nitro 2, but it is worth noting that it did go up just slightly. So let's talk ride. Um, right off the rip, I'll say this. Uh, I'm very happy that Puma has knocked this one out two in a row in terms of the way the ride feels, uh, the way the mesh sits on the top of my foot. Um, just overall, the fit is really well done with this shoe. And even this like weird shark fin that they've added that I think resembles like the heel cap of the uh, Infinity React series shoe where it's like this pseudo kind of rubber material, but I don't know why they add the spike to it. Uh, that just kind of like to re reinforce the heel. Like it keeps the lock of the shoe nice and snug. Uh, it keeps overall this this mesh. The main difference I think here is that it's a lot more breathable than in the DV8 Nitro 2, just simply because this area here in the uh, new mesh pattern they have allows more airflow and it's noticeable. I felt it while I was running and I was kind of surprised at first. I'm like, oh wow, cool. I didn't even think about that until you know I started feeling the air like right at the top of my foot and kind of in the toe box area. So. Uh, those pieces of the shoe were nice complements to already a successful model, in my opinion, which is the DV8 Nitro 2. So there's a lot of good things that happened here, and then there's a lot of curiosities, right? So number one, uh, the fit is fine for the shoe. I am curious as to these, like, fly ease esque pieces of the shoe, uh, what their main purpose is going to be for moving forward. I understand that it's, like, it's to help the lock of the shoe and then allow for some... I guess, leeway when you tighten this area and your foot kind of expands. I'm guessing the cable here is going to stretch back or it's going to pull more uh, more downwards if the shoe uh, needs to. So this is gonna allow for that flexibility. Personally, I haven't gotten to the point where I've needed to tighten it to the point where like this cable area is going to be reinforced or it's gonna kind of pull. Um, other thing to note with that is that it's not the only uh, point of lock on this area we do have the you know the shoelace loop in there it's just i guess a second piece of or a second point of failure if you want to say so like if you lost the shoelace holes here at least this band will hold it or if the band breaks you have the shoelace vice versa so it could be just entirely a decal i highly doubt it but to my understanding it's to give you a little bit of you know, leeway when you start tying the shoe down to allow for a little bit of looseness and flexibility as you're in the middle of your run. So, that's a curious piece. I just don't know how I feel about it right now. Um, if anybody has a personal experience with it and wants to let me know in the comments, go for it. Uh, it'll help us all out if we kind of have a better idea of what they're for. Um, but other than that, the ride itself highly resembles the DV8 Nitro 2, um, if not at a little bit smoother with like a certain subtle pieces that I think have come out as better. So uh, again, the shoe has a little bit lack of stability when it comes to when you hit the ground simply because it is a higher stack, it is a 10 millimeter offset. You have a little bit more leeway for things that go around in the shoe. And I'm personally a fan of that. I don't want like a shoe that's like totally locked and feels like a brick. I like a little bit of that looseness and some of that instability in a daily trainer. So that piece has been working quite well with me and it's kind of a, it pays homage to daily trainers I've had since like 2019 up to like 2022 when the shoes were a little bit more wild and they didn't have so many extra moving parts to them uh, to keep the shoe kind of fun and kind of push you over the edge and yeah, that was just kind of my thought there, whereas like certain shoes that came out now feel a little bit more safe, too many extra parts, and just don't feel like their predecessors for whatever reason. Like the, the change was not a good move in those cases. I'm specifically talking about like the Mach 5, Mach 6 uh, successor in that in that rendition of the shoes, but you know, we're here to talk about Puma is not Hoka, right? So overall with the specs, with everything coming along with this shoe, as a daily trainer, it's excellent. It's probably going to be really good when it comes to uh, being your daily trainer for a shoe that has an eight millimeter offset as your daily racer. So, you know, if you're one of those guys who uses like the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 or the Next% 3, um, the Alpha Fly in this case as well, like that's a good shoe for this. Um, I know it's specifically built for the Puma branding of like the Nitro Elite 3, I believe that's the shoe. I don't have that shoe, I will test it when the time comes. I may even consider switching 
to Puma shoes permanently just because the quality here is like sight unseen and I'm enjoying my time in these shoes to be completely honest. Like Adidas has been killing it, Puma has been killing it, and uh, my usual culprits for shoes like Hoka and Nike, they've been dropping the ball for a little while. So um, this is just something, again, that's just my opinion, just my takes. So it wouldn't surprise me if I get, pick up a pair of Elite uh, threes and I start using them in tandem or in uh, unison with the Deviate Nitro threes. So that's again, just my first impressions. We're gonna see as the shoe goes along, how does the mesh hold up? You know, does the rubber on the bottom of the shoe hold up pretty well? Is the lack of stability in certain areas of the ride going to be a big issue moving forward? What the heck are these pole cables going to do as I start running more and more in them? A lot of unanswered questions at this time concerning those particular specs, but as we get there, we'll get some more answers. We'll get some more damage reports on the shoe. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how far we can take it. I'm hoping this thing will go to at least 400 plus miles like the DV8 Nitro 2. It would be quite upsetting if it doesn't because again, as a successor, you want to add things to the shoe that not only make the lifespan better, but make the quality of your run better as well. So that's the expectation, but we know from past experience that's usually either definitely the case or not the case at all. So. I think we're going to leave it here, so if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns about the shoe, let me know in the comments below. Um, but for that point, we will leave it at that. So, thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one.